This video is going to show you how to carve this panel. It is one based on works done in the southwest of England in Devon and in Ipswich, Massachusetts in the second half of the 17th century. When I first encountered these panels, I thought they were impossibly complex and couldn't imagine being able to carve them. And when I then first tried carving them, I would spend hours and hours working on one. But over time, learned how to break it down into some simple elements and to divide up the panel in easier to digest sections. So the video will show you the whole gamut from the layout to carving the outline, cutting the background, and putting in all the details. Um, and it's one of uh, maybe a dozen different related patterns, some of which um, I uh, covered in the book I did with Lost Art Press Joiner's work, and there are examples there um, that are all variations on a theme. So this video will show you carving this particular panel, but then when you're looking at the other ones in the book and in subsequent drawings I'm doing, uh, you'll be able to carry on pretty easily with them. The first step uh, I have already done, struck margins around here and a vertical center line. And this uh, this panel I've got is a little bit different size than what's in the drawing. I think mine is between the margins. It's nine and a half by 14. I think I called for 14 and a half this way and nine that way. Um, and it doesn't make a difference. It's fine. Uh, they'll just be slightly different proportions to my carving here all the steps will be the same. So I'm setting this compass to the distance from the center line to the margin and then drop down from that top to find this center point. And before I scribe it, I just walk around and make sure it's going to do what I want. So I'll lean on that center point there. And when I scribe with a compass, I tend to use both hands. What I don't want is the compass to skitter around and I tilt it in the direction that I'm headed as well. These ring forest woods like oak are very grainy and sometimes the compass can um, catch in the grain and follow that rather than the line I want to strike. Now I've struck that first arc and now I've closed the compass down a little bit and strike that inner arc which sort of just fades out at about the, the diameter right through here. And while I'm on that part I will strike these lines from that center point to the corner beyond that arch. So just a little diagonal line. And those are for really one of the last touches on the panel, the spandrel area out there. That forms a center line for the design that happens in that triangular area. And then I will set up the horizontal lines for that urn. And that piece is about two inches high uh, and it's about an inch and three quarters off the margin. And those can vary. You can mix that up however you like. Uh, as you do more of these panels, you'll experiment with this shape here. But for right now, I'm just striking uh, the top and bottom of that and oh, 
say quarter inch. Uh, I'm checking the plans as I go. And I'll also strike a center line. You can't see that when I have that ruler like that. I'll strike a horizontal center line through this urn as well. Now, the width of it is four inches. That's easy math. So two inches each side of the center line. Right there and right there. Now, you can freehand that rounded end of that urn, or you can draw it with your compass too. If you do it with the compass, then you just set uh, one point on that horizontal center line, one point on that top bit. I'm a little bit off there. I can close that down a tiny bit. Come this way a little. And then this is my point that's the edge of this piece. So just sort of connect the dots like that. And the same thing over here. like that. So that is uh, the, the limits of that urn. I'll just try to show you where that is here and there and north and south like that. Um, and then you can also, I think I said freehand in the feet for that urn. And I want them to happen before this starts to bend up. So they come from here and from there and they just flare outward like that. And you can measure those points off this center line as well. Um, now, I'll just generally knock the pan, divide the panel into thirds. It isn't three equal parts. Um, one section is up here, uh, and then another just below or around that center line. And, and they can vary pretty wildly. chalk and a straight edge are not really a great thing. Generally the thirds. Here's my bottom margin. It'll show up better in the chalk on the camera than uh, the scratches there. Um, and we'll begin to break this up into those three parts. So why don't I do a little V-tool work and then show you the first thing I'll cut after I get the arch and the urn established will be these leaves that'll fill this bottom third. So I'll use the V-tool uh, to do this arch. First I'll do the outside one and Side one. So I'm right handed and I carve to my left that way. Here I'm still carving to my left. I've just changed my position in relation to the panel. And 
while I'm here, I'll do these. You can do these at any point, um, just outlining them. Don't outline that center line to it. And the urn, I can do that now, part of that now. Carry this all the way across. Now the first real freehand element is going to be the tops of these leaves and I think in the instructions I talked about just sketching in the base of that center stall and these leaves come sort of out of that and hit that one-third mark and then bend over all the way to the margin. So if you're leery about drawing these curves by hand, keep in mind you only need to draw part of them at a time. So you come up to that line and then from about the, the middle of that half you come down to that margin, which I can't hardly see that margin. And just sketch it in. Now it goes all the leaf goes all the way down into this corner. It just has a little reverse curve in it like that. A little droop to it like that. So that isn't all that difficult uh, to sketch. And you can carve it any which way. I'll come right from this corner. Hit the margin right there. And that's the top of that arc. And this will come to meet it like that. Probably every time I carve this, I do it a little differently. So I'll keep referring to the notes here to see what I'm supposed to be doing next. And I'll do the interior section of the same arc, really. Like that. Now, um, 
So if you're looking at those step by steps, I'm, I'm up close to step number four now, and that'll be a little loop on the inside of this. Uh, and you can establish that with a gouge if you like. I've got a gouge here that's, let's see, five eighths of an inch wide and a, a fairly good degree of curvature to it. So it's going to, if that center point brings me across here to the inside of that line, I'm going to just knock a bit of a circle. Uh, just half of one, right? Like that is what I did in the drawing. So coming out of that V2 align, And now there's a, a shape that uh, sort of comes from there and goes bloom, bloom, bloom down the sides here. And it's, it's, if you looked at the, um, the video about the S scroll, there's a, a rounded leaf about like that, that, that this becomes sort of the inside of. And then another rounded one here. And then a leaf here that blends into this cut and ultimately into the margin here. So there's not a lot to these. Like that. And they look better in V-tool work than they do in chalk. And there's always going to be variation among that sort of thing, so don't stress too much about it. If you wanted to be really particular, you could throw your square over there. See how I've got that one up a little higher than this point in both cases. Both of those junctures shifted up a tiny bit, not to worry. But if you want to, you could carry those across, give you a target for doing the second one. So now comes the shapes here that sort of then connect uh, across the middle, uh, across the top third there. And the first piece of this comes out of this part, like that. So sort of make a, a rounded bit for the top of that. And then it comes down and curves not quite uh, it doesn't hit the center because there's that center stock is going to be there again um, and then same thing next door like that and if you need to you can see that one of those doesn't droop lower than the other I've got a little disparity in their shape there. Not fatal. And the top of them is another sort of arcing line like that. And uh, for those of you that see faces, you know, here you go. Here come the eyes. And let's Try this one first. Like 
like that. Sometimes it's hard to reach it. Sometimes I notice I'm stepping right into the light. So I'll try to knock that off. Yeah, I can't help but do it. I need to get at it. I'll try it this way. So that's pretty good. Uh, yeah, this one's a little higher than that one. That's fine. If they're way off, it's it's a little jarring, but close enough is all you really need in this stuff. Now, boom, boom, boom. So there we are up to about step number six. And number seven is uh, sort of a big fat shape that aims for this point right at the other side of that diagonal. So it's a rounded shape about like that. So what I think of as the, um, the top of that shape is right opposite that diagonal right there. And that one's easy enough. If you can find your V-tool again. Sorry about getting in the light. I work in this shop just with uh, natural light. I don't have any electricity here, in here. I don't want any, but that means the light can often be quite variable. Um, I put the tulips in next, but I'm going to go instead. I'm going to jump and do the top up here while I'm at it because it's just so simple. It's just a rounded leaf this way and that way. Like that. Now, so now I'll step back to, on my chart, number eight is there's freehand tulip shapes right here. So, and this is where the discrepancy between the height of mine and the height of the drawing, it sort of gets damped out in here. Um, the center stalk comes up a little ways and branches off for these leaf shapes that are coming in here. And they, one of them, the, the bottom tulip shape curves around and, and then shares that line. And the top one curves around like that and goes that way. Then they have a one, two leaf there, or I don't know, they aren't leaves really. And then a rounded one there. Uh, you want to try to fill up a lot of that space. There's going to be very little background to cut out of this. So let me chop that one. Come up like that. And this, this, you just pick up in that V2 line. And 
do that. And then here, like that. So, this, this element is a little narrow. I'd like to make it a little wider than I drew it. that and now this one just round it out like that and sometimes that stalk goes straight up to this stuff here I've got a little bulge in it come down there Now the trick is doing the mirror image over there. And I've got that, um, that stem for this flower a little higher than this one. I can bend that down a little. The rounded piece that blends into this one, rounded one that goes up to there, inside, inside, center whoops that bulge and that There is a lot of the basic outline. Now, and that I think is actually all of the outline in the in the step by step stuff, except for what happens in the middle here. And um, but now I'll show you how to carve the rest of it. Uh, there's a lot more to it. A lot of the rest of the carving relates to work done earlier in the S-scrolls and, um, and in the other designs. So one thing that's real simple is there's little leaves sort of peeking out behind all of this stuff. And those I usually strike in with a um, gouge. In this case, I'm using a broad number seven, about a three quarter inch wide number seven there. Maybe a sm smaller one here. No, I can try to squeeze in these with the same tool. And there's one part I didn't do in the uh, in the outlining and this leaf gets a little hollow in the middle of it and you can omit that if you want I usually include it Um, these all get an interior outline as well. So 
So why don't I do those, show you what to do in there. Looks even more like an eye now. This one is a little confusing. It sort of shares this outline a little bit. And down here, I'll do a little work. I keep losing that hole fast. I use a gouge to define the tips of these leaves. And there's one right there sort of in the middle, and then blend up to uh, the other one. This will come down into the corner. And that gouge is number seven again, the three quarter inch number seven. Um, so there's background work to come out and then uh, but let's let's do this shape in here first show you what goes in there and what goes in here um, this one there's a couple different variations but what I drew for you is a, a sort of scroll right in there and then a single leaf and half a leaf um, so again, related to that S scroll, that's uh, such a main part of this body of work. There's pretty tight quarters in here for that um, that scroll, and then you can, if you want, outline that leaf and the next with the gouge. And then this one blends up into the V2 line, like that. And I'll take the shallow number five for the background stuff and just take out that bit right there. Like that. Get rid of that. Here I've switched to hand pressure to do that background stuff. It's very little of it to be taken out, but that shred right there. And you can chop right behind that. And then it gets those in it. And you take every other one with a little piece out of the back of it. What did we do in the, just did a um, little curving vein in there like that. Up in this one, um, what did I use? Well, let's use a do, do, do. 
Some of it depends on how much room you have up there. I'm going to use something more curved. So go back to that earlier tool. No, a bigger one. Ha! Jump all around. So this is going to be the tool I use. It is uh, an antique gouge, so not with a number. And it's three quarters of an inch wide. It might be comparable to a present day number eight. And I just strike what I think of as two shoulders there. I'll do them over here while I have it. And then a number seven, the narrow number seven. to connect back to that outline there. And then the number five to take that out. Like that. There, I'm just using really the corner of the tool to sneak in there like that. And because I've struck that with that previous gouge, I've severed those fibers and then I'm able to pop that out really just with a few moves like that. You just have to be careful. If you go too far, you'll take that that solid bit out and we want to keep that. Um, the decoration on that is real simple. It's just two more of these. And this is getting a little bit small. Take I took the larger of those two and cut a chip behind it, like that. The resulting shape here, I'm going to bevel. So here I need to be cognizant of where the grain is, where the fibers are running. I don't want to bevel this side this way because I'll tear into it. So I'll bevel this side, coming down to the middle, like that. And this one, going up from the middle, and here I can turn the tool over and use the bevel up. What that gets me is a, a convex shape, like that. And then this one goes down, down to the middle. Ah. It's one thing carving these, and it's another carving them with a camera in your armpit. This uh, piece just gets the bevels here and there. And again, coming down to the middle. And depending on how big your panel is, how big your tools are, um, you might have a broader or narrower bevel than that. Sorry about that lighting again. Uh, you can see when I'm trying to come up it, it just doesn't cut as clean.
And so this is all that's going to come out for the background. Is just this stuff up in that section. So it's a surprisingly small amount of background to come out. Also gets that little bevel. Whoops, and it also has grain direction. So you can do that first. There's the remnant of that V tool on. I want that to come away. So, same thing out here. These bits are coming out. And I decided I was wrong. You should take the background out before beveling that leaf. Because it's less fragile. Once you take that background down, I mean, once you bevel that leaf, then you've got uh, an extra chance to ruin it. Here I had a little more wood to remove, so I picked up the mallet. And that sort of circle we've got comes out. And then you weasel around in there with the corner of your tool to bring that down. Every now and then you see me come back and lean on that tool vertically like that. And that's to uh, sort of re-incise a cut that wasn't deep enough in the first place. Or I have shreds of fibers right there. I pick them out like that. Same there. So by now I've sort of got into uh, a scenario where I've cutting out this background and then finishing off this section rather than coming down here and cutting all the background down. Uh, how you progress the work really probably doesn't matter much unless you're getting involved in trying to be as efficient and as quick as possible, uh, which shouldn't be a concern when you're first carving these panels. So this kind of approach gets you a little bit of variety in your work. Uh, but can leave you uh, forgetting some stuff, missing some steps. So you want to watch it.
Yeah, I'll knock that out. So there's that shred, so just dig that with the uh, background tool there, just reinforce that incision to get those fibers loose. You can pick up the tool you did that with to re-strike that if need be. Like that. And now just using the corner of the tool to kind of pivot around like that. And the other corner like that. 